El Capitan is the National Nuclear Security Administration's first exascale supercomputer. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory has been deploying world-class supercomputers uh, since the 1950s. And every time we get a new generation of supercomputer, it allows us to process more information faster with greater detail uh, to accomplish our scientific mission. An exascale supercomputer doesn't just stand by itself. It has to sit in a facility that is capable of, uh, of operating it. The cornerstone elements of supercomputing in facilities are that you have to have first the space, the square footage, you have to have power, you have to have cooling, and you also have to have um, the structural integrity of the facility to support the infrastructure. Building 453 has gone through a lot of different electrical changes. Um, originally when the building was built is for terascale computing, is for 208 power. Um, the next step went to um, petascale computing, and that's a requirement of more 480 volt power. So we've transitioned from more uh, commercial uh, solutions to industrial solutions to now utility solutions. So the latest um, infrastructure upgrade is called Exascale Computing Facility Modernization, and that is actually bringing in a total of 85 megawatts of power into Building 453, as well as 28,000 tons of cooling. Underneath the floor, we have electrical and cooling. So there's big pipes that bring our facility water to the cooling distribution units, and there's a bunch of electrical infrastructure that eventually lets us plug the big line cords um, into the, the racks for power. The networking on this system actually runs over the top. The amount of networking cables used in order to wire up a copy 10, if we were to lay it out, would be multiple football fields long. The sheer size of the networking involved for a system like El Capitan involves several people working around the clock just to lay down the cables for the networking. So just in Livermore Computing, we have about 120 people uh, who, who work on, on all of our systems, but most of them have been involved in this one because it's such a significant effort for us. And then on top of that, you have hundreds of additional people between uh, the vendor for the system, as well as contractors for electrical and mechanical, um, other folks at the lab who aren't directly living more computing, but support us. So it's really just a huge uh, you know, group effort to make this thing go. In operations currently, there is a sense of excitement because we haven't been able to touch the, the machines yet. Um, I think everyone's excited to, to open her up and see what the engine looks like, right? And, and be able to touch and feel everything and make sure uh, we understand um, how the components work and on a hardware side, how we can be effective and um, use our skills to, to troubleshoot any issues moving forward. So we're working directly with the vendor this time and out the gate, we're learning side by side with them all the different components and all the tools that they're they're learning how to use, we're learning right alongside with them. So there's a lot of uh, unique things about LCAP that we're learning. Um, and as with every HPC high performance computing system, we have to learn how to monitor it. Uh, not everyone is monitored the same. We don't know what we don't know yet as far as how we're going to tie their monitoring tools into our monitoring tools. Um, all of this we're going to learn together. In preparation for El Capitan, we received early access machines, EAS systems. These are predecessors to the El Capitan architecture that our application developers use to ready their applications. They're our best look at the architecture that El Capitan will be in the absence of any of that system being available to us. Though these EAS systems are a fraction of El Capitan, they already rival the top 200 world's fastest supercomputers. I feel really excited about the process and all the challenges coming in order to get this exascale computer operational and to see what it will bring to the world in the realm of science. I love working on this stuff. Uh, I have been at the lab for about 20 years now and almost all that time I've worked in the High Performance Computing Center and it's just so cool to work on the fastest computers in the world. If you think about every person on the earth, all eight billion of us, if every person on the earth did a calculation, an addition, a subtraction, every second of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year, it would take the entire earth eight years to do what El Capitan will be able to do in one second. I cannot wait to see what El Capitan allows us to do. The reason I work at a place like Livermore that fields machines like this is because you cannot do this anywhere else. El Capitan and its sister machine, Tuolumne, will allow our scientists like myself to do things that they could only dream about five, 10 years ago. That's the reason I come to work.